dear students now we are going to start our today's lecture today's lecture will be on acute kidney injury hoping you will mute your audio and video and after the session is over we will uh, call you the questions if you if you have any questions now um, we are going to the main topics that is the acute kidney injury in the epidemiology of acute kidney injury you know that is in all patient the incidence is about 1 to 5 percent but in icu setting it is about 10 to 25 percent now what about the mortality overall mortality is 20 to 70 percent but in 79 percent of patients who require the renal replacement therapy, especially in the ICU settings, they usually succumb. Now, the uh, definition. An abrupt fall in GFR, that is glomerular filtration rate, over a period of many two days, days with rapid rise in nitrogenous waste product in the blood. That is, rate of production of metabolic waste exceeds the rate of renal excretion. Now, there is a defined definition of AKI that is as any of the following. That is, increase in serum creatinine by more than 0.3 mg per dl within 48 hours or increase in serum creatinine that is 1.5 times above the baseline which is known or presumed to have occurred within the period of seven days. And if urine volume reduces less than 0.5 ml per kg per hour for six hours. So any of these, if the uh, criteria fulfills, then you will label it as a case of AKI. Now there is acute kidney injury network. network. It is in the year 2000. Five, that is from stage one to stage five. That is in stage one to three, it uh, actually denotes severity. That is in stage one, that is there in the risk group. In stage two, that is there is injury, and in stage three, that is the failure. And in stage four, there is the loss of nephrons, and ultimately in stage five, there is end stage renal disease. That is they may uh, needs the replacement therapy. Now you come, that is the in AKI stages, that is in stage one, two, and three. This, uh, there is some criteria, that is in urinary output, and the time duration. So if serum creatinine is more than 0.3 milligram per dl, or 1.5 to 1.9 times from the baseline, or more than <coughs> point, um, the, more than 26.5 micromole per liter, that is in stage one. And when urine output is less than 0.5 ml per kg per hour, and the duration of time is six to 12 hours, then we label it as a case of stage one. In stage two, that is creatinine is more than 2 to 2.9 times from the baseline. Urine output is less than 0.5 ml per kg per hour. And the duration of time is more than 12, uh, 12 hours. And stage three, that is if creatinine is more than three times from the baseline, or if there is needs of renal replacement ther therapy, if there is anuria, that is the output is less than 0.3 ml per kg per hour. And, and if duration is more than 24 hours, then we level it as a case of stage 3. You will see it especially in the, uh, the settings of, in the setting of, uh, especially uh, when the patient is admitted in the ICU settings. So this is uh, very important to note that urinary output is important. Now in stage one, in terms of serum creatinine, if it is more than 1.5 times from the previous result, 
then we label it as a case of a stage one and in stage two if it is more than point two uh, more than two times or equal to two times that is serum creatinine from the previous result and in stage three if it is more than three times from the previous result and if there is anuria more than 12 hours then we label it as a stage three Now, the risk factors for AKI. If eGFR is less than 60 ml per minute per 1.73 square meter of body surface area, or there is history of AKI, or if there is a diabetes, heart failure, or liver disease, or neurological or cognitive impairment, if there is use of nephrotoxic drugs, use of iodinated contrast agents within the first two weeks, symptoms of history of urological obstruction, if there is a sepsis or age more than uh, 65 years, then uh, these are the, all the risk factors. Then you have to consider that and they may develop, they may develop AKI. So this is important and you should always uh, note this. So, uh, To function properly, kidney requires normal blood flow. So if there is any impairment in the normal blood flow, there may be pre-renal AKI. If there is a functional glomeruli, tubules and interstitium, if there is any abnormality, then there is intrinsic or renal pathology of AKI. If there is any outflow tract obstruction, that is the post renal causes of AKI. So uh, you should also see all these factors. <clears throat> now you see, you look, that is a pre renal cause of AKI. It is the most important cause of AKI. Among all these, most important cause is pre renal cause. So if there is any hypovolemia, hemorrhage or volume depletion, either due to vomiting or diarrhea or diuresis or burns, if the hypertension is due to cardiogenic shock or due to sepsis or anaphylaxis, if there is hypertension, hyperperfusion due to NSH or due to AC, AC inhibitor, ARB, or due to, uh, that is hepatorenal syndrome, so uh, there is a reduction of renal blood flow. In case of cardiac failure, that is uh, due to even due to cirrhosis of liver or nephrotic syndrome, there is also uh, outflow, uh, that is the uh, renal perfusion is less, there is a reduced GFR and there is pre-renal AKI. So you must uh, see all these factors in case of pre-renal cause. And you must note that this is the most important cause of uh, AKI. Okay. In case of renal or intrinsic AKI, there may be glomerular cause, there may be tubular cause, there may be interstitial cause, there may be also the vascular cause. Say so in case of acute glomerulonephritis, which accounts for five to 15%, it may be a silly or it may be due to unassociated or anti-GBM diseases, that is glomerular basement membrane diseases. It may be due to cryoglobinemia. It may be other causes, even uh, that is a post streptococcal glomerulonephritis, which is also common in, in case of children. In case of acute tubular necrosis, that is ischemic cause is 50%, toxin is 30%, it is the most important cause. And in the interstitial cause, as we are using more and more NSAIDs and anti antibiotics, so uh, acute interstitial nephritis is also common. So you must, uh, uh, you must take consideration when uh, a patient is using long-term NSAIDs. There may be also infiltrative diseases like lymphoma 
also the sarcoidosis, tuberculosis. So you must uh, uh, take care of this group of patients. In case of vascular cause, that is vascular occlusion, that is renal arterial stenosis, renal vein thrombosis, and even the cholesterol emboli, that is actually less. That is uh, less. That is less than two percent. So you must be consider all these factors when you are evaluating a case of AKI. Then comes to the postrenal urinary uh, outflow tract causes of obstruction. Uh, that is, uh, it may be intrinsic cause. It may be extrinsic cause. In case of intrinsic cause, that is intramural. Uh, intramural cause that is due to a stones, blood clots, papillary necrosis. It, it may be intramural cause that is urethral stricture, benign prostatic hypertrophy, carcinoma prostate, bladder tumor, and radiation and fibrosis. <clears throat> and as, as I already mentioned, if there is any stone, then uh, that is intraluminal obstruction may be there that may also lead to the back pressure and there may be AKI. And in case of extrinsic cause, that is as a, a pelvic malignancies, uterine prolapse in case of elderly lady or due to repeated childbirth, and then maybe retroperitoneal fibrosis. So you must consider all these factors in, in the evaluation of post-renal, uh, that is the uh, post-renal causes of AKI. Uh, now comes to the acute kidney injury <laughs> in a summary, and that is pre-renal cause. What you will get if you do the some investigations? That you have to do the urinary osmolality test. That is more than 500 milliosmol per kg. If you do the urinary sodium, it will less than 20 milliequivalent per liter. If we do the fractionated, and that is sodium. Uh, it will be less than 1%. And in case of microscopy, you will get the bland RBC and uh, you will do the blood urea nitrogen and serum creatinine ratio. Uh, and uh, that is ultrasonography will be normal. These are the findings in case of prerenal cause. As you know, in case of prerenal cause, uh, even that is the sodium, that is the sodium will be more reabsorbed. So even sodium will be less. In case of uh, intrinsic renal diseases, if it is due to the ischemic or toxic ATN, uh, it will be it will be urine osmolarity will be uh, equivalent to three milliosmol per kg. Urine sodium will be more than forty milliequivalent per liter. As you know, it will be more uh, excreted in the urine. So urine sodium will be more. And microscopy, there is a dark pigmented cast. And fractionated sodium will be more than 2%. In case of acute interstitial nephritis, urine osmolarity will be variable. Urine sodium will be more than 40 milliequivalent per liter. Fractionated uh, sodium will be more than 2%, and more eosinophils, you will get it, say, say in case of interstitial uh, nephritis. And in microscopy, you will get WBC, RBC, and leukocyte cast in the urine. In the post renal cause, urinary osmolarity will be variable, urinary sodium low in the early part and high late. Uh, late in the later part, there will be high urinary sodium. Fractionated sodium will be variable. Microscopy will get the bland RBC and others. Ultrasonography will be diagnostic in case of post renal because you will say you will see that is the ureter will be dilated and there may be some abnormality in the urinary bladder as well as prostate. So you can get all these findings uh, in in these settings. Now comes to the pre-renal AKI. In case of history, any obvious cause of hypertension you must look for due to hypovolemia or hyperperfusion. It may be due to hemorrhage, massive hemorrhage or hematoma. 
GI loss due to diarrhea, vomiting, renal loss, skin loss due to burns or exfoliation. Third space that is in pancreatitis. In say in case of acute pancreatitis, there may be huge exudation. Evidence of cardiac failure and sepsis. And if so, what is the source? You must look for. Say in this era of corona, those patients who are in the severe condition. Uh, they, uh, they also develop the AKI. So this is also important. Uh, you, you must look for in case of, uh, in case of severe, severe condition. You, uh, you, this patient also develops the AKI because there is a hyperperfusion to the many organs, the null perfusion decreases and you will get AKI. So when you will clinically examine this patient, will, you will get that is blood pressure will be reduced and pulse rate is high, low volume and 3D. And the peripheral parts, periphery, periphery will be cool. That is a vascular shutdown to the vital organs. Capillary refill time will be greater than two seconds, implies volume depletion or poor cardiac function. Lying and standing blood pressure, significantly drop implies hypervolume. Say, if there is a postural hypertension, marked postural hypertension, you um, will consider there is a significant hypervolumia. If there is a feel the patient is warm, whether it is sepsis, you should look for. And peripheral pulse, there may be bound in, ca in case of septic shock. And you will look for the skin uh, target. That is, in case of gross dehydration, that elasticity will be loose and dry leaves, mouth and mucous membrane. Uh, it indicates that the systemic hypervolumia and the face you will you will look that his eyes will be sunken that implies the dehydration and jugular venous pressure may be low if volume is depleted so in pre-renal cause you will get urinary osmolarity will be more than 500 million small per kg urinary sodium will be less than 20 milli equivalent per liter because it will be reabsorbed and fractionated uh, sodium will be less than 1%. In case of microscopy, that will blend, and burn creatine in ratio will be high, and ultrasonography will be normal, because the main lesion is the pre renal cause, so you will not get any abnormality in ultrasonography. In the post renal AKI, history is important, that is lower urinary tract symptoms. <coughs> Sorry. That is frequency, urgency, dysuria, nocturia, poor stream, hesitancy, and terminal dribbling, strangulary. You may get this as a symptomatology of uh, prostatic hypertrophy. There may be prostatism, that is, the, that is frequency and urgency is there. There may be hematuria, that is visible and non visible. There may be also the loin pain. In, case, in examination, you will look for the palpable abdominal mass. Say, if you are getting bilateral palpable kidney, you will also consider whether that, that there is a adult polycystic kidney disease. There may be palpable bladder. If there is a bladder neck obstruction or distal obstruction, there may be visible hematuria in urine examination. And rectal examination prostate in males, you will also do a DRE. So in the post renal uh, cases, you will, uh, urine osmolarity will be variable, urine sodium will be low in the early part, and the late part that will be high, and fractionated sodium will be variable. Microscopy, you will get the bland and uh, hematuria. Imaging studies is diagnostic because you will get some pathology in the bladder or in the uh, ureter or in the outflow tract. So here, uh, my, uh, that is the ultrasonography will give you uh, some clue. So this is also important. In case of renal cause, history is important. Whether there is any hypervolumia, hypertension, hyperperfusion, sepsis, or toxin or drugs, uh, patient will be uh, edematous. There may be puffy face. There may be oliguria. There may be history of fever arthritis rash, say so these are more marked in case of rheumatological diseases, like SLE. There may be headache, nausea, vomiting, if say there is raised blood pressure. 
and shortness of breath that may be due to acute cardiac failure, that is left ventricular failure. There may be also altered consciousness and presence or history of primary disease will be there. So during examination, you can get, that is a signs of fluid overload, that is the patient may be, a general, there may be generalized edema, jugular venous pressure is raised in case of the uh, congestive cardiac failure, or AKI causing significant volume overload. That uh, you will also look for the third heart sound that may be uh, audible in case of if there is a failure. Lungs, if, uh, you may get the pulmonary edema. There may be the signs of pneumonia or source of sepsis is there if it is due to septic shock. In case of abdomen, you can get the ascites, organomegaly, and in urine, urine output, catheterization, if there is any doubt, then you have to measure the urine output by putting a catheter in the bladder. Now, during examination, you will evaluate for rashes, arthritis, oral ulceration, skin chains, uveitis, epistaxis. Uh, epistaxis, this uh, is more marked in case of rheumatological diseases. New neurological signs, including hearing loss and stigmata of endocarditis may be there. So you will look, you look for the any signs if there is any. In case of renal cause, if it is due to the acute tubular necrosis, urine osmolarity will be equal to 300 million small per kg. Urine sodium will be more than 40 million per liter. Fractionated sodium will be more than 2%. Microscopy, you will get the muddy brown granular cast. So, uh, because more sodium will be reabsorbed in case of acute tubular necrosis. In case of acute interstitial nephritis, urinary uh, osmolarity will be variable. It may be up to 300 million small per kg. Urinary sodium will be more than 40 milliculum per liter. Fractionated sodium will be more than 2%. And in case of, uh, you will get the more eosinophil in case of interstitial nephritis. It is more marked in case of NSAID induced interstitial nephritis. In microscopy of the urine, you will get the WBC, eosinophil, RBC, and leukocyte cast. In case of acute glomerulonephritis, which is common in case of children after post astrotrochal glomerulonephritis, you will get that the face is a puffy face. Urine osmolarity will be variable. Urine sodium will also be variable. Fractional sodium will be variable. And you will get in microscopy examination, hematuria. And these are the dysmorphic. It will actually take the shape of the tubule. So there is a dysmorphic RBC. You will also get the RBC cast and proteinuria. In case of grown of it is also important. mild. It is more marked in case of nephrotic <coughs> syndrome. And here, that is RBC cast, glomerular cast, you will get more in case of acute glomerulonephritis. Renal biopsy is usually not required, but um, uh, in some conditions, biopsy can guide the management. So this is um, all about the uh, situation, which may, that is oxygen, uh, that is uh, concentration, saturation will be gradually lowered down. And this is the ischemic uh, changes. Uh, say when there is ischemia or nephrotoxin, there is a release of inflammatory mediators that may lead to the tubular epithelial cell injury, that is necrosis and apoptosis in the one arm. Uh, it will also form the cast that will obstruct the urinary tract. And there is a tubular back leak. And that is a reduced GFR and oliguria. On the other hand, if there is a vascular uh, uh, injury, sorry, the above previous slide, that is, uh, in case of, uh, if there is a uh, inflammatory media, mediator, that may also lead to the vascular endothelial cell injury. That may lead to the vasoconstriction. That is the vascular congestion. That may lead to the persistent medullary hypoxia that also leads to the tubular epithelial cell injury. 
on the other hand decrease glomerular filtration pressure that may reduce the reduce gfl and oliguria so in a schematic uh, 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 schematic uh, uh, di diagram and this is very important to understand that is uh, the uh, pathology pathophysiology of this ischemic uh, uh, causes of or uh, nephrotoxic causes of aki <laughs> so now comes to the pathophysiology of atn tubular epithelial cell injury you are seeing that is uh, in case of ischemia or hypo uh, uh, ischemic causes there may be necrosis that is uh, it, that means a cellular death and there is also some apoptosis in case of cellular death there is a slapping of viable and dead cells with luminal obstruction and the rest viable cells they usually migrate and de differentiated that is proliferation ultimately there is a differentiation and reestablishment of polarity and there may be normal epithelia so if the, you can uh, manage this patient during this period say it may be one week two week even more then automatically the normal if it, uh, normal cells will be proliferated the viable cell will be differentiated and it will cover the necrosed and apoptotic apoptot uh, cells so uh, this period management is very important now there is you are seeing that if there is the urinary flow is reduced increased intraluminal pressure is there there is a denuded and tubular membrane there is a back leak back leak and there is the injured injured tubular cells and you seeing that is the obstruction uh, obstruction of the from the debris and necros cells so in this way in this way um, that is the obstruction is there and the uh, acute tubular necrosis is there and all this pathology here now what to do when there is a rash creating in whether it is acute or chronic you have to differentiate so this is important that is um, distinguishing between aki and chronic renal impairment is important as the approach to this patient differs greatly this may save a great deal of unnecessary investigation say in case of chronic kidney disease a clinically you will get patient is anemic there is a high blood pressure and there is a creatine is raised and the history is usually long but in case of acute kidney injury you will see uh, as already been mentioned that is there may be some uh, pre renal cause or renal cause or post renal cause in case most important cause is pre renal there may be history of hemorrhage or diarrhea or vomiting or any any other fluid loss so this history is very important in case of uh, uh, renal cause there may be post gastrointestinal gastroenteritis and in case of post renal cause that is there may be some obstruction in the outflow tract so this history is also important as well as the finding so factors that suggest chronicity include history of hypertension diabetes arthritis nsh stone disease and obstruction and congenital heart disease so uh, if say a patient is suffering from long standing diabetes and hypertension so uh, there is usually that may lead to the uh, kidney disease that is usually chronic kidney disease factors that suggest chronicity includes absence of acute illness long duration of symptoms there may be leukonychia leukonychia actually denotes that is hypoalbuminemia it may be due to renal loss or it may be due to um, liver cause that is in cirrhosis of liver there may patient is anemic usually patient is anemic so anemia hypertension raised creatinine is very important clinically for ckd there may be also hypocalcemia and previous uh, serum creatinine if you know that is that is also raised and one important thing that is the kidney size so if you do the ultrasonography you will see that is kidney size is really a small in case of the chronic kidney disease but not in acute acute disease so what investigation are most useful in aki that is 
in urinary findings is very important whether there is any cast or uh, what source of cast that is rbc cast or granular cast in case of blood uh, you will get whether there is uh, any uh, evidence of serum creatinine or any uh, that is any sepsis or others you will also get, get proteinuria in urinary uh, in case of urine you also get, get the rbc protein there but less amount cells cast and urinary sodium among fractionated sodium is also important so you are seeing this slide this is also important slide that is in case of dysmorphic red blood cells suggest glomerular, glomerular injury dysmorphic cell a scanning microscopy showing dysmorphic red cells in a patient with glomerular bleeding so this is important because it usually takes the shape of uh, shape of tubule so the rbc's shape will be changed there may be also the monomorphic red cells urinary sodium sodium showing many red cells and an occasional larger white cells with a granular cytoplasm so this is you are seeing that is the rbc cast this is very important in case of renal causes of aki and can you will see the rbc cast as well as glomerular cast and granular cast is also there so this is also important in case of uh, this also indicates that is glomerular injury so marker of equitable necrosis that is pigmented granular that is the muddy brown cast muddy brown cast you are seeing that is the muddy brown cast and in case of acute interstitial nephritis you will get the eosinophils that is very important in case of interstitial nephritis so this is also important now comes to the these findings you will get in the urine and in hematology you will do the full blood count and blood film that is neutrophilia and sepsis eosinophilia may be present in acute interstitial nephritis uh, cholesterol embolization or vasculitis thrombocytopenia and red cell fragments suggest thrombocytic microangiopathy that is thrombotic thrombocytopenic perfura so you can get it and in biochemistry you will do daily that is serum urea creatinine electrolytes that is ps serum bicarbonate and calcium you know urea and creatinine will be raised and urea um, uh, raise of urea is more and electrolytes you will get the changes that is there may be hyperkalemia uh, as well as the changes in the sodium and ps will be low and if there is acidosis metabolic acidosis that is the bicarbonate will be less that is less than 20 milliculum per liter and there may be also the hypocalcemia so this is also uh, important uh, even patient may require the calcium supplement in case of biochemistry that is you will get the uh, cpk will be raised my there may be myoglobinuria that indicates rhabdomyolysis serum immunoglobulin serum protein uh, you will uh, look for electrophoresis ben jones proteinuria if you suspect it is a case of multiple myeloma then you will do other investigations and coagulation studies disseminated intravascular coagulation associated with sepsis can occur so uh, you will uh, look for this now comes to the immunology say uh, whether anti-nuclear antibody anti-double um, uh, strand antibody you can do it uh, that is in case of sle that may also and that also involves the kidney and c3 super complement concentration is also important because in active sle it is low in sle acute post infectious glomerulonephritis and cryoglobulinemia uncare related vasculitis may lead to the kidney disease anti glomerular basement membrane antibody it also affects the lung and there may be also aso and anti dns b titer also important um, and there is a uh, aso titer is high in case of post estrotococcal glomerulonephritis and you can also look for the hepatitis b c hiv serology and because that may chronic hepatitis that may also involve the kidney now comes to the imaging 
that is renal ultrasonography or renal size, a symmetry and evidence of obstruction, you will look for chest x-ray, also important, uh, because if there is a sepsis, there may be a, a source of infection in chest x-ray. You can also do the x-ray KUB, and also in selective cases, uh, and that is the CT scan. So initial seven steps of AKI management bundle. First, you have to confirm whether the, uh, there is AKI, acute kidney disease, by your definition and also the findings. Assess emergency, whether there is any pulmonary edema due, due to acute left ventricular failure, whether there is any hyperkalemia and acidosis. So you have to immediately, you have to address all this, uh, uh, all these complications, and you have to uh, do the full clinical examinations, uh, A, B, C, D, H, all the full clinical examination of the patient. And first, you have to stop the nephrotoxic drugs, urine deficit test, and confirm by the routine uh, examination of the urine. Biochemistry, you will check it. That is urea creatinine. You can also repeat this test. Renal ultrasound and consider urinary catheter. Uh, an urgent senior review. Catheter is due to the, you will look for the flow of urine. And management principle is, first you have to identify the source of infection and treat aggressively, keeping the dose adjustment. Because uh, if you use the antibiotics, that needs the dose adjustment, because it, it will be, uh, half-life will be prolonged, Less, less excretion, so you have to adjust the dose of the antibiotics. Minimize the indwelling lines uh, to prevent infection and also remove the bladder catheter if anuric. Identify and treat bleeding tendency, uh, uh, that is a PPI, uh, that is a proton pump inhibitor or H2 antagonist, take or avoid aspirin and transfuse if required. Usually in AKI, transfusion is not much needed, but in CKD, uh, transfusion is required if the patient is much anemic. And you have to optimize the nutritional support. That is maintaining the adequate nutrition, enhances patient survival. Maintain protein intake about one gram per kg per day. Protein intake more than 1.2 gram per kg per day can dramatically increase azotemia. That is, uremia may be increased if you uh, put more protein in this patient. Now comes to the when you will advise the renal replacement therapy. Initiate dialysis before uremic complications set in. Early renal replacement therapy improves mortality and recovery. A specific types of therapy are available for critically ill patients. Either hemodialysis or peritoneal dialysis, you can advise. So, uh, now you can, uh, uh, any questions? If there is any questions, then we can give it.